No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Extremely excited today to bring in one of my favorite rappers, one of my favorite hip hop personalities, really, throughout my whole life of paying attention to this art form. The Jew Man, hey, OJ, is in the building. What do you do, cuz? We had the No Jumper, man. Legendary, man. I'm happy to have you in here, honestly. That's hard, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I, I love being here. No Jumper is the biggest motherfucking podcast <laughs> out right now, sir. I oh, appreciate for that, real. dude. Well, big shout out to Adam22, man. I remember, because you know what I did today? I went on World Star and I typed in your name and I searched from the beginning to mm. just see like the exact moment, because I was such a hardcore World Star watcher at that oh, time true. that I could just assume that I probably found out about you from there mm. and I just remember like being so mesmerized and just being like who the fuck is this guy I never heard anybody talk <laughs> like this <laughs> and uh even and the music the same thing with the ad libs mm -hmm. and everything because mm -hmm. I was already like hardcore Gucci fan okay. right mm -hmm. and so then I've get introduced to you and I'm mm -hmm. just like this is the craziest shit ever because Gucci was obviously in his own world true Creatively. Creatively. But yeah. then you come in with a whole different attitude on everything, and That's it just hard. blew my mind as a youngin. Man, even though thank I, you, Adam. I wasn't that young. I guess I was like <laughs> mid, mid 20s, you know, 26, 20. 27. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nah, that's all, Adam. Thank you. Yeah. But, um, you know, and the, the other crazy thing that I actually got to witness is I went to that show in New York mm. where they actually booed Man, you. They booed me. Yeah. And I was bummed Man. because I, I, and I remember like it was a crazy show with like 30 rappers. On the fly, it was fucking a Wu Tang clan. They called it the backpack show, yes. But I'm a fucking trap rapper, so I'll come out there thinking I'm gonna come out here and sell some dope <laughs> on stage. <laughs> and it was early too, because I remember Walker was one of the earliest headliners. I remember Wiz Khalifa mm. was one of the earliest like artists on the bill, so that says a lot that it was Man. early enough that people didn't really know no, about no. Walker and Wiz mm. yet, mm. but yeah, because it was like. I think Raekwon and Jadakiss and, and a bunch of Wu-Tang and like all these different guys headlining and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like really being hurt watching that happen because I, at that time, every day we were out riding bikes all throughout New York City because that's what my thing was for like 10 years before I started interviewing rappers. Mm. And so every day I'm just like in different neighborhoods just really listening to you being like the sound of that summer because if mm. I remember correctly that, that, that show was at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's like I had just gotten through like three months of Make a Trap Say A that was just like that was the song I was hearing in every neighborhood in Brooklyn. Ooh, so then I was kind of bothered to be like damn here I am with this hip hop show and I got some elitist people in the audience who, who don't respect what you're bringing to the table. Mm. So it, it was very much a sign of the times, you okay, know, where true. like the East Coast and the South were still much more divided, mm -hmm. I think, than they are now. But that mm -hmm. definitely uh, brought me a little bit of sadness at that at that point in my life. Yeah, it, it fucked me up, too, because I looked at it as like, damn, uh, I'm OJ the Jew, man. I know I got some good music, but... I think they really wanted to hear some lyricists. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, what you talking about uh, copper chicken and I'm booming, I'm bunking. We, we want to hear the shit. They got Ray Corn, them, Wu Tay, them, and I just felt like it was probably like bad timing, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe if they would have brought me out with Jada Kiss to do right. Who's Phony, Who's Fake first, and then going to like one or two OJ the Juice Man records, it probably would have turned out better. See, you know what's funny about that, too, is I remember seeing both of you on the flyer, and I'm a mega hip hop nerd, so I'm like, OJ and Jada Kiss have a song together. They need to perform well, the song man, together. That, that's what I thought, too. Like, that was a big ass record, too. Jada Kiss. Snap. Yeah. Because I was a young kid. I'm thinking that when you see two rappers doing a song together, that, that means that they're really homies. Mm. Which, you know, as you get more in the game, yeah, you're like. Realistically, why did why did Jada Kiss have a OJ Jada verse on that Jada, song? Yeah. Probably because he was looking to get some of that young, hot, down south mm -hmm. energy, yep. get himself exposed to a yep. different audience. Yep. You know, get exposed to a different audience. It's a business, mm -hmm. end of the it's day. You know, yep, you're right, definitely. You're right. But yeah, I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Because it feels like that argument has gone away in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Where there's still a lot of people who love you know classic style hip hop, mm -hmm. but you're definitely somebody you came in the game with different ambitions and True. but how would you describe the way that you look at like lyricism and that whole debate i mean i don't, I don't got no problem with it. if if i could like do my whole song with fucking big words i would do that but i come from the street like i'm a uh, dude that stood on the corner so i only really rap about what i did or done or doing like I, to to my audience i don't want to be a liar mm. so if i sit in and try to rap to them like uh lyrically like 
I'm a lyrical nigga. I'm a, I'm a, I'm be lying because mm. that's not what the fuck I do. I try to show them the the view of me from standing on the corner making money, the, just to get them a perspective of how I made some money. But you really don't got to go the route I went to make that kind of money. You can make that kind of money doing anything right now because mm. it's like 2022. You you could do anything to make some money right now. How long would you really say that standing on the corner trapping part of your life was before you man, really became a shit. rapper? I started, man, I, I was on the corner at 15. I started at 15. Shit, I'm finna be 41. I might have got away from the corner. I made it in 2008. Okay. Mm, I, I still didn't get away from the corner because that's really all I knew. And the rapping shit was new. Like, I never left Georgia till I probably got booked for my first show. Mm. Uh, never flew before. I couldn't even tell you how to even get a, from back then, like, to try to book a plane ticket or a flight or a Greyhound. I couldn't tell you how to do none of that because I'm just no boulder, Chris. Like, even with me living in Georgia, I, I couldn't even, I still got to use GPS to go to the west side mm. because I don't leave my area. Right. Yeah. Damn. So that that kind of like really puts it into perspective. And I remember when I read Gucci's biography mm -hmm. and he was talking about you just really being out there and stuff. Because, okay. you know, even when I'm young listening to OJ, I'm like, is there any chance this could be fake? You know, is there <laughs> yeah, any chance? Yeah, like yeah. maybe he's just a real creative yeah. guy. Maybe yeah, he never yeah, really true. did nothing. He's just talking about it. True. But like then I read Gucci's book and I'm like, oh okay, 100. percent I know that that's real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy because Gucci always, on on one song, Gucci said, "Sign Wu and Frenchy, but Jew got his own money." Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, what was your perspective on rapping though? Like, I, I really want to drill into that time period of okay. your life like before you were rapping slash when you first got started like who actually put the battery in your back to let you know that this was a thing were you guys just standing on the corner rapping that um and see in our apartments uh where i grew up they got like a green box i guess it's like a generator box they run the power through right so we started on that because we used to hang at that the 10, 12 people, we standing around, everybody from the same apartment. So we started off being on a, they call it generator. Well, we call it the green box. We started off being on the green box, freestyling. And then I got, I had one of my personal buddies who got killed uh, before we, like, I want to say, it was way before I started, like, made a name, OJ the Juice Man. I always been OJ or the Juice. I just added the man on right. when I started rapping. Because the the reason why they call me OJ is Otis Jr. Right. So that's the OJ. And then since OJ, I put Juice. You know what I'm saying? So some people call me, hey, OJ, or hey, Ju. You know what I'm saying? So I just added the man with that. And um, I want to say, man, my buddy Dayon, he got killed. But he was telling me he used to walk around with a boombox, and I always try to freestyle and or just joking around, rapping over other people's beats. And he like, boy, you really can rap. You need to try it. But I still wasn't taking it serious. Uh, I went, I got some uh, jail time. I had to go to uh, Frank Scott Penitentiary, but I ended up getting some boot camp, and the boot camp was in the middle of the penitentiary. And the key of time, I brought that rapping shit I was doing from Sun Valley to the chain gang. And everybody was liking me. I'm, I'm making music, like, because in the chain, in, in the boot camp, they got it where when a male walk in, you got to say, attention on dead one, sir. Good morning, sir. Mm -hmm. Attention on dead two, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that every time an officer walk in. So I started making raps about uh how i was doing the cadence for the uh, officers that come in i had a song called attention on dick attention on dick attention on dick she'll bust it for me <laughs> she'll bust it for me you know what i'm saying but i made it off sitting in jail fucking with the correction officer coming in for the head count right yeah so from once i got once my family came and picked me up from that gucci had probably just dropped a trap house and my sister gave me the cd when, when I get in the car, like, your boy Jerry's dropped son. He put out a real album. I said, oh, man, I've been in hill rapping. I want to try to do some shit like that. That's what my buddy just did. Right. I want to kind of try to rap, but I went as far as say I wanted to do a real album, but I just wanted to try to make music. But how well did you actually know Gucci at that point? Was he like a, a friend or was he just kind of a guy you knew from being around? 
Um, no, nah, he was a friend. I, I mean, because shit, we've been knowing each other. It, um, elementary from Mountain Park uh, Apartments to Sun Valley Apartments, and then from Sun Valley Apartments, Gucci had already been rapping like before Big Cat. You know mm. what I'm saying? He, we had like a studio on Gresham Road, our locally homeboys that we all knew each other and. Two, three of the homeboys had money and made a studio to try to help people like us who don't know which way to go to try to rap. You know what I'm saying? So, which is pretty incredible if you think about it, because that's a bunch of careers that wouldn't have happened that if, have been, yeah, you know, true. if they didn't help you guys. Or maybe, maybe you would have figured it out on your own, but maybe you wouldn't have. Maybe you know? I wouldn't. Yep, you're right. You're right, Adam. You damn sure right. Yeah, so big up the woe, you know what I'm saying? Big up the never again family back then. We was doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, how would you describe your personality at that time? Because a lot of that—that's what you brought to the table—is like when you think about a dude who's standing on the corner selling whatever all day, you just expect them to have a certain type of personality, mm -hmm. being sort of quiet to themselves, not even really talking and stuff. A lot of times, I meet these young friends of rappers and shit from Atlanta and shit like that and you realize that like to them not being weird and not talking too much is like a huge thing you know and so that's a part of why it stood out so much when you came out because you were like sillier and, and just mm -hmm. saying crazy ass just shit, shit yeah. having way more fun <laughs> yeah. making selling drugs realistically yeah. sound yeah. a little too, too fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah for real for real have you did you always have that energy like were you always just a ball of energy as a kid yeah, because I want to say, like, I, I was the funny guy. Like, I'm going to tell some jokes. I'm going to play. I'm a, uh, I'm a funny type guy. Like, uh, if you my boy, boy, like, we play type game. Like, I'm probably try to foot clip you, <laughs> walk into the bus stop. Uh, I probably, if you if you wore some old ass shoe, but you knew we was going to a part, I'm going to be the one kind of. Laughing at you about, bro, you know we was coming here. Mm. You know it was going to be female. Why would you wear them motherfucking? <laughs> it's six of everybody tried to get fresh. We might have went and stole a couple of outfits or whatnot, but right. you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm that kind of guy. Like, I'm just fine in hell. But then I kind of, uh, I want to see y'all just silly, man. Playful. Playful, silly. Did you realize that would work for you musically at a certain point? That like you could still talk about real shit, but that if you animated it and especially with the ad libs and mm -hmm. shit that made it sound even more yeah. fast paced crazy high energy okay uh i want to say yeah because see i'm a fan like of, of all kind of music and back when before i started rapping like we riding around we might rent a j car you might rent a j car for a full day and my my buddy lavis older brother had all the hardcore cassette tapes like fucking Dog House Posse, fucking Ruthless Juvenile, mm. fucking Hard Boys, Ghetto Mafia. So we would steal his tapes and be riding in the J car, and now we in there more bouncing and we rapping it word for word. My buddy might sing one part, I might be the other rapper on the song that sang a part, and we in the car riding, having fun, whipping. What, what we call whipping is like, uh, we riding, you might be riding in the car, you doing 10, 15 miles per hour, and you whipping left or right, but you bouncing while you whipping. So it kind of look cool, because now your car like this. But if you're looking at the driver at the same time, he bouncing while the car, you know what I'm saying? Whipping yeah. left or right, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yo, there's one, there's one scene, like one old ass freestyle that comes to mind back in the day where you, you had the grill in, mm. you had like a big baggy like uh, red polo oh, shirt, I think. Oh, uh, Coogee, and, yo. And, yeah, and you're just <laughs> rapping your ass off into the fucking uh, with a camera cigarette behind my ear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna be real with you, like I've I've watched a lot of shit from you, and that energy always made me feel like there might have been something in your system that was hitting a little different that day. That day and then, cause <laughs> Adam, I swear to God, I'm not a freestyle rapper. I can freestyle rap, right. but not not like around people because I don't want them like, damn, you fucking up, so I'd rather write it. But that day I freestyled and I'm like, damn. And then years later, everybody liked it. But it was really, to me, a bullshit freestyle right. when I really should have, could have, like I see on some ciphers, how they rap they shit, it been like previously wrote. Right. I could have did that, you know what I'm saying? But I went thinking, I was over at the spot, uh, one of the spots we had, and then somebody came and told me like, bro, uh, you know Mike Will and Gucci, I'm over the uh, film, they said they, they said pull up. 
I'm like, oh yeah. And I wanted to get in the camera bad. I, right. I wanted to be seen. You know what I'm saying? Like, let these folk know, bro. I can rap too. You know what I'm saying? My buddy can rap. We all both Chris niggas. We damn near can rap. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. I made I made sure I hurry up and got over there. And then uh, they they gave me an opportunity. Like, um, I don't think nobody really said like you can freestyle. Just like go ahead. If I can remember, I just remember Mike Will playing the beat. Gucci freestyle, then I'm like, and then when Gucci stopped, I'm like, shit, it's my turn. Let me try. Let me right. grab some of that. You know what I'm saying? And then boom, I just gave it a try. So was there any particular uh, pills or anything you're on at that time, or was that just pure energy? No, nah, that was pure energy. <laughs> okay. But they, they, it was ecstasy time back then. <laughs> <laughs> you got into that for a while? Uh, I probably tried ecstasy maybe, I want to say for about maybe four. Four or five times, but every time I would take that shit, it make me throw up. Really? Yeah. So oh. I just like my fuck that. Right. Cause it, it's to see make me throw up and uh, 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 champagne make me throw up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's probably two good things to avoid though, realistically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Were you yeah. okay? So like, I remember as soon as you blew up. That you lost a lot of weight, mm -hmm. like yep. right after. Man, was, caught, uh, fucking caught type two diabetes. Wow, uh, got died, not caught, but diagnosed with type two diabetes. Um, I don't know. Well, I want to say I I got diagnosed with diabetes, um, two thousand eight. One one week, I had to go to the hospital. Sit in the hospital, like uh, I want to say about six seven days. When I first got there. I was throwing up. I couldn't stop throwing up. I don't know why I was sick. I, I, I couldn't. I don't. I just couldn't stop throwing up. I got to the point where I'm throwing up nothing like black stuff, yellow stuff. They say that my stomach lining, wow. but I can't stop throwing up and I can't stop pissing. I'm pissing and I and I'm, I'm oh I'm super dehydrated. I can drink two bottles of water, like right now, and then as soon as I drink the water, I'm back dehydrated like I didn't drink any water. Wow. So then after that, my bones and stuff start cramping, feeling like, damn, what the fuck going on? So I end up having my girl take me to the hospital, get in there. They're like, oh, shit, boy, your blood sugar fucking almost a 1,000. I'm like, well, what it supposed to be? They're like, the normal, regular body without diabetes complication uh, is 150. Right. I'm like, well, how in the fuck my shit 900 something? Wow. So boom, they put me on a uh, potassium bag. They... Shoot me with insulin. I, uh, then I started doing good. I made it to the metformin pills. Started back cheating, eating the candy because I'm a snack man like a motherfucker. Right. And I think I got that shit from my dad. I watched my dad eat snacks like a motherfucker. I said, you know what? You got, you fucked me up with the snack shit. Mm. You got me snack manning. Yeah. So I went from the metformin pills back to the insulin shots. And then I went from type 2 diabetes to type 1. Okay. So type 2, you can really avoid it as long as you do straight to not take the shot and just take pills. But type 1, you got to take a shot. Right. Ain't no pill. Nothing can help you. And then so they put me on a three-shot a day system. Uh, one for breakfast, one for lunch, and then one for dinner. So I had to get accustomed to it. But then on top of that, they want me to prick my fingers to see where my blood at, to know how much insulin I need to shoot. Right. So now I'm like, God damn, I'm back in math class. Oof. It been so long I've been in math class, you want me to ration out this? And what a nightmare. Most people I, are just not going to do it. Yeah, I and then they telling me what I eat, how I know if it's sugar in it, go off the total carbohydrates. Right. So anything that has total carbohydrates, you can't really eat. So that would make me switch to all diet drinks because I learned everything diet. To zero total carbohydrate. Right, because you're probably eating whatever before yeah, that, right? Man, Just regular honey food. Bun, yeah. Big honey <laughs> bun, motherfucker. I might put peanut butter on my honey bun. I'm going to fuck crazy. I was I was like 24 before I even really started to think, like, maybe eating pizza every meal isn't good. Nah, yeah, <laughs> you know? not with all that Christian bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, wait, was that hard for you to, like, switch, switch to eating over. healthy food? Yeah, at first, yeah, because I was mad at the fat, like, why in the fuck this shit hit me out the blue? Right. And if you only ate fast food and shit your that, whole life, that's, eating a salad's got to feel like oh shit, my you know? God. I, I didn't really start eating salads to fucking. Because I'm like, ain't no meat on the salad. This shit all grass. I'm not a horse. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wish to eat all grass, bro. You can put some meat on the salad, though. I, and I, I learned that. And yeah. then I had to find out what dressings I like. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So now, when I do eat a salad, I put like three dressings on it. I do uh, ranch, uh, fridge Italian, and Thousand Island. You mix them? Mm-hmm. All That's on. the most OJ the Juice Man thing I could think of. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, boy, that shit tastes so good, Adam. I'm like, oh my God, bro. Now I see why people eat salad. You are a man of taste. Mm, yeah. Nah, for real. I put my girl, like, she come down there. I got all three bottles out the fridge where I'm squirting <laughs> this one, squirt this one, and then I squirt this one in the circle. Right. Yeah. Did you ever stop drinking lean too? Uh, yeah, but I still was drink, still drinking the lean, and then I got uh, my dumb ass didn't know I had tried tried some Tussinix one time. That's the yellow one with all the grits in it. Okay, that's the fucking sweetest one, bro. I had one cup, pulled it up one cup. Two hours later, I was in the hospital. Wow, shit shot me up immediately. Like yeah. I'm talking about ain't no sticking the insulin and trying to burn your levels back down. It's all out of whack. The wow. lean got me all out of whack. I'm in the hospital two hours later after drinking the lean, bro. Holy shit. So I bet I start, I ain't touched yellow since. But I still look cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I still look cheap when I do get my hands on it because it is very scarce yeah, in these my days, neighborhood. Yeah. So when, if I do get my hands on, say if I get an eight, most motherfuckers going to pull a if they get an eight and that shit scarce, nigga might cut down from two ounces every two liter to an ounce or an ounce and a half to two liter. But me, by me being diabetic, I'm going to pull up light. So if I had an ounce and then I got a 20-ounce bottle, diet uh, Sprite or anything, I'm going to put probably like point, uh, a half of, a, a point five of lean mm. instead of the whole uh ounce right you know what i'm saying because i remember like like there's definitely been some people who took it too far i remember there's this classy video of uh mac miller rest in peace where french montana is like telling him like bro no because he got he got a bottle of sprite and he poured it up so dark it's like the the darkest sprite you ever seen and you're just looking at it like what the fuck and french montana's trying to tell him like bro you gotta chill like that's not cool but you gonna yeah you gonna need lots of water that shit right a lot a lot of polar lean gonna keep you dehydrated a lot of them texas dudes always talk about good though oh yeah (laughs) the texas dudes always talk about how they basically have like the Texas style of drinking lean is you don't drink so much that you get fucked up and have yeah, health uh-huh. problems and shit like yeah, that because uh-huh. that is some grown ass man mm-hmm. shit to be able to have that self control to be able to enjoy it, enjoy it and, and not, not hurt yourself at the same yeah, time. Cause yeah, because we all know people who took it too far. Yeah, you know, nah, I don't see I don't see to go for. I I used to drink hard, like I used to pull hard, but once I got the di- diagnosed with the diabetes and learned how to. Maneuver with the sugar. I like you can't pour it like that, bro. Mm. Even though I still be wanting to take, cause like when I get in the studio, I be might want some lean to help me be creative. Lean my weed, a right. But I'm I'm not finna just gulk it down. I'm gonna sip that bit. It might even get watered down from the ice. You mm. know what I'm saying? But that bitch gonna get drunk. Right. But I'm not gonna drink it fast. Right. Cause I always want to say that whenever I see like younger dudes who are drinking way too much lean, I'm like. Listen, I could show you a Boosie interview with Vlad, uh, him talking about how bad his lean addiction got and how yeah. bad it fucked him up. I'm like, I wish that young people, it was easier to just let them learn from older people, people but they usually want to learn themselves, through, you yeah, know? Yeah, they, they, they want to go through it themselves and fuck up themselves when they could have found the fuck up through somebody who did it before you. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. for sure. You right, you down sure right about that? Definitely. Yo, I was I just interviewed Metro the other day. Ooh, and I don't think I actually Metro Boomin, Metro Boomin the legend, wow. but I don't think I actually said anything to him about it on the interview, but I was watching an older interview with him where he was talking about how early, early in his career that like you I think were the first rapper. Dead Fountain. The first like legit rapper that he worked with and that I think his mom would be driving him to go produce for you. Yeah, uh I brought Metro, his mama, rest in peace to his mom. Yeah, rest in she peace. was uh uh, when I first brought Metro to my studio on Gresham Road, I want to say his mama was pregnant with his little sister. Wow. Yeah. And she went and let Metro leave uh, way from St. Louis. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And she, he, she wouldn't let him leave by herself because he was like fucking 16. Right. And Do you then, remember how you discovered him the first time? Um, how I first met Metro was... Let's Luger. I found Let's Luger, but then Let's Luger went uh, walk a flock away. Right. 
And then in the midst of that, Les Luger wasn't really sending beats no more. So, but I needed that sound because I had did the whole six rings and they were majorly produced by Les Luger. Mm. Um, go in the email, I see a kid emailing me, um, that beat is so, so metro. That was his first tag. I'm like, damn, motherfucker hard. Motherfucker, so I hit him back like, damn, bro, I'm start using some of your shit. Like, man, I appreciate it. I make my beats like Let's Luga, Woo the Woo. I, I fuck with you. I'm on that style, like what you on coming from with Let's Luga. But he not knowing in my head, I'm like, you my next Let's Luga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, yeah. Bro, I ain't really, you feel me? So, boom. Because a big part of being a rapper is having the the ear to be able to listen to all these new producers and decide which ones you should invest some time yeah, and money into, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like, Metro wanted to sign to me, but I'm like, I was telling him, like, I don't want to give you that bad paperwork. I don't really know that lane of paperwork. And you, when you sign, you're supposed to get something. I don't want to be that one where if you a $50,000 producer, but I give you 5000 because I see you don't know. And you just getting in and you don't know that your potential could be higher, worth more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want that on me to, well, man, I signed to that fuck nigga and he, you know what I'm saying? Which is respectable because there's a million of those stories yeah. in rap. Yeah. And you'd rather be the person who helps them get on the right course than I just like be the it. one who snatches up That's a big chunk of their publisher. Like, bro, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I rap, I rap yeah. on whatever you send me, I rap on, put it out, put your name on it. I would sign you, you a good nigga, but I don't want to do bad business. Right, yeah, that's very respectable. But uh, so what what was that memory like, though? He'd just come to your studio and, yeah, and come, come work? Yeah, my studio, let him wear the 32 chain. That's when I had the uh, orange and white 32 chain. Right. Let him wear the 32 chain. I think Metro them might, might stay the weekend, maybe. Or I'm trying to think because I know I had a lot of shows on the weekend. I was doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If it wasn't the weekend, it was the weekday, but they wouldn't stay long. It'd be like a two two day, maybe four day run, and then they'll go back, and then we'll just utilize email from there. Right. You know, so I believe it was just the fact that we wanted to face to face. At the time, I'm OJ the Juice Man, the real rapper, Woot the Woot. He trying to get in the music industry, and then boom, it happened. Were you particularly that. impressed by his talent and his work ethic at that time? Work ethic, talent, and his beats were going to. Fuck crazy. I'm like, oh my God, I got to rap on these. <laughs> right. I'm talking about, I, we, we, he sung so many beats. Like, I probably still got Metro beats with the old tag right now to this day. Really? It's crazy because, like, just to see him start from that position. And then the other day I was watching this clip with Southside, and Southside said, he's the number one producer, mm -hmm. period. Wow, like, Southside uh, said that. And Southside I'm like, big as hell. Because it's hard for me to take all the producers and really decide who's the mm. best or who's, who's the most successful or whatever. Okay. It gets discussed a lot less than the rapper conversation, you know? Mm. But to hear Southside say that, I was like, man, yeah, that really, you just fuck that says a lot. That. Yeah, 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 fuck it, yeah, for real, for real. If Southside said that, yeah, nah, Southside stamp, he, he high caliber. Right, yeah, no, that was crazy. Um, okay, so you had this thing last year with Waka. Is that still a thing, or what, what happened with that situation? Nah, it, it it never was a thing. It just, I don't think Walker really, like, Walker wouldn't know my contract. Like, you know what I'm saying? I understand the thing is, that's your mama. Mm -hmm. You got to defend your mama no matter what. I do the same. But what did his mom thing. say that made him want to jump in and defend it? Because I said it was bad business, oh. bad contract, money was taken. I didn't say I want my money back or I need to get my money back or I just was letting because they, they on the interview they asked me where it went bad at. And I've just been real, like bad being it, bad being it. You fucked up. And you know, it probably touched them because that's a nigga, that's that's dude mama. I respect that. But I don't got no reason to lie. And I don't want nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm just they they asking me what happened to me, why the buzz love and woo. Hey man, it was bad being a bad contract, and I, I didn't. I'm coming when I signed. I was from the street. I was standing at the fucking bus stop. Mm -hmm. I got shot eight times. I got die. I got diagnosed with diabetes. I just wanted to try something else. So I hell yeah, I went in that bitch, no lawyer, and signed right there. Wait, so you got diagnosed with diabetes before you blew up? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh well, in the midst of it. Ah, okay. In the midst of my first show. My my first show, it was in Virginia, Roanoke, Virginia. I got 
sick there, like my the sugar shit was going out of rec- control then because I was still eating sweets, mm. drinking regular drinks, and didn't know that the diabetes was around the corner. Right. Yeah. But so yeah, because I remember years ago Deb doing an interview on I think the Breakfast Club, and they asked her what her regrets were or whatever. She did. With OJ wrong. She said something about how she wished that she had put her full effort into your career early on, and how she didn't, and she always felt like she regretted that she didn't give you her full attention. I guess true that's true that somewhat true but it's majority of not not staying real bro like because if everything was if i was satisfied on my end with Ms. entertainment i'd still be with them because that would kind of person i am i'm real loyal like if we getting the money together and everything going as planned and ain't nobody stealing ain't nobody cheating Bro, I'm still be with them. Mm. I'm still, I, I'm, I've been with, I'm finna be 41, man. I've been with these same people I've been with since I was freaking 22. Mm. So I'm just that kind of dude. Like my loyalty is there, but once I peak flow, Oh, yeah, I'm going to get out of there. I mean, to be fair, you kind of fell out with her around the same time that Nikki and Gucci both did too, you right? So like, it's not so, like you're the only one. You, so I, I, why I'm the only one lying? Like, bro, I don't got nothing to lie for. Like, if I don't even be wanting to go into detail. Like, bro, bro I don't have anything to lie for. And then I, I see, like, the way they kind of tried to bash me, saying I'm lying, Juicy ain't right, why you do that? I, I ain't try to do it to... Like down there, I fought with there. It just the business went down the right, and then once I see flaw, man, it, it ain't gonna sit well with me. I'm gonna be a whole different person than what you thought. Oh, oh, they cool, that Judy Homer. He, no. I mean, when you think about it, though, it, it's not that surprising if the business wasn't done correctly either because, I mean, she's just like a regular manager or whatever doing her thing, and then all of a sudden all these artists she's fucking with become huge. But you got to think, I'm the only artist that was signed to me. Like, Gucci wasn't signed to mm, me. She, there was just management shit, right? She was business partners of So Ice. Okay. Or even the Nicki thing. Like, she who the management. fuck is ready to handle yeah. Nicki Minaj's career at that point? Yeah. True. You know? True. Like that's got to be pretty Nick, wild. Nick, I want to say Nicki might have came. I don't really know Nicki insights. I remember she come to the video shoots and stuff. I don't know if it started off as management or label. I was watching one of your old videos today, and she's just in the video, sitting there like counting yeah. up money or yeah. something, sitting next to you yeah. like on some regular shit. I'm like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Nicki Minaj, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. She still following me right now to the day on uh, Twitter. I seen. I'm like, oh, damn, that's all right. Because we probably started that friendship, Twitter friendship. Back from that video shoot. Like, what's your... I don't think Instagram was big back then. You right. know what I'm saying? So, and then, so, because I look at my Twitter, I'm like, oh, damn, Nikki ain't hit the unfollow button. Mm. But she probably is so big now to even go through the list of see who following her. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's, or who she's following. That's legendary, yeah. Type shit, so. Definitely. How, I mean, when you look at that, you being around for the beginning of Nikki's career, in a lot of ways, that was like the beginning of the the era that we're in right now where mm-hmm. there's just a shitload of female rappers who feel mm-hmm. comfortable trying to make a run at it and a bunch of them are popular and shit. Uh, what's that been like for you to see that? Could you ever see yourself uh, signing a woman? Mm, yeah. Good shit. They, they, the women cracking right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glorilla going the fuck crazy. Like women True. cracking mid. Hey, all the female car to be so hard. Uh, Nicky hard. Yeah, I would sign a female as long as I see that potential there mm. and willing to work. Because, you know, jump uh, Adam, I tried artists, but they was all, like, local homeboys or nephews, my buddy nephews, or just local people from the area that see we got a studio, hey, man, me, and they didn't really want it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, and it's funny because nowadays you see it where, you know, somebody like Lil Baby, if you look at his album, realistically, he's probably not gonna have any features from his homies. He's, it's mostly his homies, like famous rappers, sure, Mm-mm. but it's like it's just not really like a normal thing to put like a bunch of your homies who are just getting started as rappers Rapper on their projects. Mm-hmm. But you guys all were kind of doing that at that yeah, time, yeah, trying to help with hey. the mixtapes and everything. Mm-hmm. It was just much more normal. Yeah. Whereas now, it's like 
Lil Baby will sign an artist and give him a verse on his album, you know, mm. but they treat that shit like it's really special these days because sure. they realize that if they if they shine the light on four or five of their homies, that realistically the world probably ain't going to pay attention to any of them. But sure. if you pick one artist and really focus on pushing them, that kind of works better, mm. I guess. Damn, you right. I don't know. Yeah, nah, you right. Because, okay, so this this is one thing I always wanted to ask you because at one point you were, you were one of the first rappers who I've seen really grinding features. Mm. And I think I noticed mostly because they were all getting posted on Worldstar. Okay. So at first I'm wondering what the fuck the user submitted thing at the mm. end of the title means. And then I'm watching it and I'm like, this don't really seem like a dude OJ would really be kicking it with. <laughs> like yeah. OJ don't seem like he really trying to stand next to this yeah. guy in the video too much. What uh, what what was that era of your life like? And what's the most you ever ran up in like a um, a month or a year off off of doing features, especially during that era? Mm, doing feature, man. I want to say because at one point I was uh, five thousand a feature. Then one point I went up to. I don't went, I don't think I went no higher than seventy five hundred for a feature, even at my point, uh, peak. Right. Uh, Early days though, yeah. like old days of rap, where it just wasn't normalized yeah, the way it is now. You know. I remember I, my highest of, of a show I made was fifteen thousand per show, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They told me don't go no higher. Like just you know you can't go higher like that. You gotta. You gotta stay with a promoter or fuck with you. You go you try to charge them twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, you're gonna run a promoter or you're not gonna get booked. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember them telling me that. And then I look at it now and they like these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers doing show three hundred thousand. Right. You tell me don't get a dub. <laughs> but <laughs> that is interesting though, because when you Damn. think about that sort of circuit of down south clubs and shit that I could imagine that if you start asking for a lot that you would sort of price yourself out mm -hmm. of a lot of those mm -hmm. venues. Mm -hmm. But at the you same will. time, yeah, definitely you, you don't want to be caught just lowballing yourself. And see, when you lowball, they wear you out in them city because they're going to bring you so much. Now people really slit tired of you coming to the city. They don't want to see you no more. Right. You just came three times in one year, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. Do you still have like your touring destinations the cities that you still prefer to hit regularly um not really just whatever call my book line right you know what i'm saying as long as the bag though we gonna bust move right definitely um yeah because i was i mean i was just listening to one of your uh tapes that you put out in 2001 i listened the whole mm -hmm. way through uh was it the the alaska and atlanta three okay yep. you finally did mm -hmm. a third edition i did it yep right mm -hmm. what's your attitude on making music at this point and like how how does it feel how does it feel different than when you were uh you know a younger man uh when i was younger by we uh, we have in that neighborhood studio mm. it's fucking at any given time it's 20 to 30 people you know Right. Versus now I got a studio at home. I ain't really got to go here and there. I ain't got no enthusiasm mm. at home where, like, creativity I can get from you, him. You know what I'm saying? And versus sitting at home doing it by yourself, all your creativity got to come from you. Mm. So, like, when I'm sitting in the studio around buddies and I'm putting a song together, they might be right there and they hear me. I know how you should say this, cause they in their head being created too, but they not no rapper, but some shit he might just say it might kind of sound a fight, and it's mm. similar to what the fuck I'm already rapping about. You and know you're grown as shit too, so you might not always know what the the kids are saying Dang, these days yeah. or what the new shit might be mm. or whatever. But exactly. but then that raises the question of like, how much do you want to even be influenced by that? Mm, you know, true. but see, I look at it as on that style, I grabbing the younger generation. Because of the fact they're my older generation is still spending money with me too, but that younger crew who maybe never heard of me, and then once they do, and they and they hear the energetic type shit I'm doing in it, and they get hip about it because they still going to school or they do a lot of workout or they're athletic player and they just like the energy that I'm giving. They'll spend before. So when my age or a couple years up front of me, they might go bootleg it. Or, I ain't tripping on bootleg, but I just care about as long as you hearing it. Mm. But as far as in the money wise, I I just want to get that that younger generation because they're more responsive to the music right now, the way the screens are still going, than the older people. Right. 
I feel like getting the OJ Juice Man feature if you're from your area needs to be like a rite of passage. Like you mm. need to just save your money up, get the OJ feature, shoot the video, yeah, and that true. that'll be like that's like certification in a lot of ways, you know. Yeah, and then see that's why I look at two out of my on the videos. I, I and then, then a lot of people be coming to me like I need to shoot the host. I start looking at it as you know it's right and it's content. It's all content. Yeah, the song might have came out in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, but when I put it out, I never put out a video, so you can really never see the visual content of this song. Mm. Yeah, because you somebody you're somebody who's seen this weird effect where you could make a song and have it be kind of like a regular song and then all these years later Man, it becomes huge because the no hook shit being on atlanta blew, blew my mind when i saw up. that like once um once i seen that when they hit me about could they use that or whatnot i'm like bro that's so fucking huge because i wouldn't have know because you know i manage myself but i i got a manager but he don't, you know what I'm saying, know how to get in key spots to where you can get OJ the Juice Man on Atlanta. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, when, when they reached out to me saying um, Donald Glover wanted to use the fuck, I'm like, oh, my God. What he know about fucking no hook? Right. You, you remember? I, made, I, I shot this shit at the disco. I remember that video, or I remember that song when it came out, and I remember thinking it was, like, the best song off that mixtape, right? Wow. And so then... All those years later, I remember people would still mention it. People would mm. like, I would even hear it played in some parties and shit mm. like that, just randomly. And I would always be like, fuck, I can't believe they know about that song, too. Wow. And then when that song was in that fucking show, I was just like, oh, my God, I cannot believe that Donald Glover was hit to this yeah, fucking the, same the, song the, the, that the, I felt like it had been kind of following me for mm, like 10 years. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. He fucked me up. I, I called my mama. I called everybody. Hey, boy, put the channel on this. <laughs> I ran it back so many times because, you know, on the cable remote, you could press uh, rewind right. on the live shit, and it rewind. I mean, I kept running that motherfucker. And I'm like, bro, my shit made it on TV. Right. That's dope, bro. It's hard to go TV, especially yeah. with the shit I'm rapping about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They they told me, um, make the trap say A wasn't going to make it because I'm referencing too much drugs. Right. And then this thing, you know, quarter, half a, whole, aye. aye. Half a, whole, aye. Hundred, thousand, aye. You know what I'm saying? They just took it the sounds crazy when you don't say the A's yeah. in between. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, wow. But I mean, hey, that was like the 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 coke rap yeah. era. You remember, True. you know, yeah. Gucci, Jeezy, you yeah. er, everybody was like just it, it's it's almost crazy because at that time it was almost like you couldn't really be a rapper unless Maybe you were talking, talking about, about selling dope. some drugs and even if mm -hmm. even dudes who mm -hmm. clearly just had no business mm -hmm. talking about this you're were talking about sure it, you know? Right. Yo, you damn sure right. You damn sure right. Yeah, it's wow. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, did did you feel like you were kind of like a little bit famous in the city before you started rapping or was was your reputation mostly built just like in the neighborhood and then you became a rapper and went national in the neighborhood everybody knew me for uh dope boy cars the 1988 box chevy on 24 so you were really doing good before the music oh mm -hmm. mm. uh, the chevrolet c10 two-tone 1984 26s Roof beat. Uh, I don't have so many box Chevy. They know me from. I'm a box Chevy dude. Uh, cutlasses on 24 with the geeked up motor T top. Uh, yeah, they because like Boulder Chris so stretched. But see, if you went to Matinell, that's how we out. You know what I'm saying? LinkedIn. So it's like some neighborhood. Man, I always knew bro was gonna be some goddamn cause he always stood out more than the crowd, you know what I'm saying? That would you'll catch some people saying that, like who was around way before rap. Like, man, I used to see bro sitting at the bus stop, goddamn. I always knew bro was gonna be some. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not yeah. fucking crazy. Just like it's crazy. Just being able to do that transformation. Yeah, true. God, I'm sitting at the bus stop. That's how I got 32 Entertainment. The uh, local transportation, like our shit called Marta. If you don't got a car, you can pay a couple, like a dollar. Back then, it was like a dollar and fifty to ride the Marta bus to wherever location you need to go. And uh, me standing at the bus stop all day, the bus that came down the street was 32 Boulder Chris. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? My shit going to be called 32 Entertainment. 
Cause I'm fucking sitting at the bus stop watching the 32 Boulder Chris all day. I'm like, well, I'm a Boulder Chris nigga. I'm gonna name this motherfucker 32 Entertainment. Mm. Sound kind of catchy. <laughs> but so was you getting shot that big of a motivating factor for you to stop really being in the streets like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 hey, yeah. Cause I was on some dumb shit on on some shit I don't even really work on a Sunday. I really play the video games on a Sunday with my nephew and shit. And phone call come in, I get money hungry and go do that shit and they shoot me eight times. Was it a situation where you were, was it competition in terms uh, of? Just a robbery. Uh, hey man, bring me there. I want to get there. I pull up with that motherfucker. Boom, 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 boom. They thought I was going to drop it. And I end up eating the bullets. I'm out there like Ace Ventura trying to dodge them mother. You remember uh, Ace Ventura when he played <laughs> yeah. on the mask and he was trying to dodge the bullets and shit. That's how I was out there doing. Boom, boom, boom. And then that motherfucker started hitting my leg and I, I put my foot down like, oh shit, I can't feel nothing in my right leg. <laughs> These niggas don't hit me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Boom, I jump back in the car with the shit and we pull off. Call my people, hey, don't do no, don't ask me no questions. Just meet me down the street that shot at the pilot. Niggas don't shot me. We gotta go to the hospital right now. Right. Boom, pull up, my mom, pull up at the pilot. My mom and them pilot, my mom and my sister and nephew pulled up maybe one minute later. Took the shit back to the house first, then went to the hospital. Had you not really seen the negative effects of trapping at that point? Was that like the first? Because had you done much jail time at that point? Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I got convictions like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't been uh, robbed at gunpoint mm, several times. Maybe at that time, maybe three times, and then I got smart to go get a legit gun. Mm. Get a legit gun, uh, pull up uh, to, to bust a move on one of my people. They they pull their gun out, try to rob me. I'm trying to get to my gun and shoot them before they shoot me. We tussling over my gun, but he got his gun on me. I'm trying to get that motherfucker. I can't get it. So while we tussling, I guess the other robber who was sitting in the car he get in my back seat, put me in a chokehold, boom. Put me in a chokehold. But I'm still tussling with this nigga at my driver, though, who got the gun on my rib. But I'm trying to get my gun and shoot him through the pants. But when he put me in a chokehold, I want to say shit, two minutes later, I'm like this. <laughs> I can't breathe, you know what I'm saying? So I just give up, like, bro, you can get the shit. Mm. Nigga took my real gun, took my little bag with my shit in it. And now, my slow ass, instead of reporting the gun stolen, because it's in my name, going to buy another gun, I'm mad. I go home and get one of my hot guns. <laughs> 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 stolen, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> but I got gun license. When thinking, boom, get caught with the stolen gun license. Oh, oh game over. With that. I damn. mean, get caught with the stolen gun, and it killed my gun license. Oh, so then you couldn't have one after that. Did. Damn. So that's why, like, in recent years, like, there was a time where I'm, I'm looking through headlines in the news about you, and it's like, uh, OJ gets caught with guns and drugs. And I'm thinking you about to have 20 bricks in the fucking <laughs> trunk or some shit. And it's like, no, it's a handgun and weed. And yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. Okay, that was one in Tennessee. Uh, going to do a show somewhere, but I had to go through Tennessee. Right. Get pulled over. We got f three legit guns. And an ounce of weed. Mm. An ounce of weed make the guns not legit no more. Mm. So I uh I hired the best lawyer. He ended up being that case in Tennessee too. But the state of Tennessee said the only way we can beat that case not under a felony is if we let the state of Tennessee confiscate our MP forty, a Glock, and a Draco. Okay. So we had to let them have the guns, but we not get a felony. Mm. And then the Kentucky shit I just had, I beat that gun case. I just, that, the Kentucky shit was just fucking March. Uh, 8 January, February, yeah, March. Got pulled over, smelled weed. I didn't even have an ounce of weed then. I had fucking six, seven grand worth of weed. But they saying by me being a convicted felon, I know I wasn't supposed to be around a bullet. Mm. But I'm saying I'm not your regular civilian. Right. I hire armed security because I'm an entertainer. 
Police didn't want to hear it. Still locked me up. I hey, don't care about that. You the convicted felon. You don't probably be around the firearm. You can't even hire armed security. You can't? That's what they telling me. As a felon? That's what, what I'm like. What the fuck? That's what I'm like, bro, I got jewelry. I, I'm going on the road to pick up money. People know I'm coming to do it. For, if you, if I'm, if I'm, just say I'm not OJ the Juice Man, and I live in fucking Pennsylvania, and they got OJ the Juice Man coming to Pennsylvania to do a show. Bro, he's coming to my city to get money. Right. So if I'm on that, and I know my area, I know this club, I know where I can lay at and hop out on this nigga when he come out the You're club. You're a sitting duck, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm like, how could y'all? How could the judge say I can't have the right though? I ain't got the firearm on me personally. See, when we got pulled over, my 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 security slash personal buddy, he got a gun license. He buy two guns. Mm. Keep one in the car, one on him. One in the glove box, one on him. You feel me? So when they pulled me over, they got the gun that was seals on him, but then the gun that's in the glove box. I'm sitting on the passenger seat. And I'm thought, thinking, being truthful to the police, letting them know, like, yeah, I got some grounds of weed. Then he flipped it. Are you a convicted felon? Anybody in the truck convicted felon? I'm like, yeah, I'm a convicted felon. Because I know, he, I'm thinking he going to find out anyway. So why lie? Hmm. Go on and tell the truth, hey, man, yeah, I'm a convicted felon. Oh, yeah, come on. Put your hand behind your bed. Ah, oh, God, damn, I should have lied then. Because mm. by the time he get to my little brother, Pac-Man, to see if he convicted, I'm already in handcuffs. So when the police ask him, are you a convicted felon, which he is, mm-hmm. I'm like this. No. Say no. Because that's how he just treat me. He treat me. I worried him. I thought telling the truth, you know what I'm saying? If you, you're a police, you're going to find out if I'm convicted or not. Right. But the thing I seen was by being Kentucky and I'm convicted in Georgia, it take a lot of hours for you to find that out. All right, right. So that's why I sat in Kentucky jail for so many hours because this bastard couldn't, didn't know how to write my charges because the convicted felon shit wasn't coming back because it's Georgia and we in Kentucky computer. Mm. The NCIC shit, you know what I'm saying? But you beat that shit. I beat it. Nice. I walked away with a misdemeanor for the weed. I they the main I I claimed the weed out the gate. I claimed the weed because it's my weed. There ain't no use for them taking the whole truck for my sound grounds weed. Right. And I got to pay bond for six niggas. I could just pay bond for me, and they wait on me outside the jail. You see what I'm saying? Right. So they charged me with possession of marijuana. And possession of drug paraphernalia. It mm-hmm. went from a felony because at first they had possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. So but I'm asking, how in the hell can y'all hit me with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon? And you ain't pull it off my waistline. You got this motherfucker out the glove box. Right. So if the glove box was locked, would it would it been the right the way it didn't look like mine? Like you trying to say when you walk to the police car, I put it in the glove. I know, brother, because he asked me how long the gun been. In the, man, that gun been in there when we came out the hotel from doing the show last night. Right. We headed back to Atlanta. We not. Oh, y'all trafficking marijuana? No, sir. I smoke. I smoke. This shit here. This this my personal. So that's why I had to do a fucking a life skill class. Oh God. A fucking marijuana education class. <laughs> Some shit I never fucking heard been of. Been smoking away for 30 years. Bitch, I've been smoking for 35. <laughs> we started off rolling fucking uh, hay in the apartment. They had hay up on the apartment. We rolling fucking hay in school paper. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been smoking since fucking 11 years old, 12 years old. All right. So I do that. I passed the life skill with a 90. And I... I think I'm bit shot now. I'm finna take the drug, drug education class to. Man, I hit that motherfucker, man. He fo- I said, God damn it, Russian. Pass that bit with a 77. Right. I'm like, it look like I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm smart in life, but I'm dumb on marijuana. Right. Well, hey. You listen, me? Like, well, but you probably, I, I'm gonna be real. If I looked at your answers, I feel like I would think your answers were pretty reasonable. It's probably because they're trying to, you know, they have a harsher yeah, understanding of weed than weed, us, yeah. right? Because they, they went to saying people ho- hospitalized off marijuana. <laughs> so me and my dad are sitting in the room while I'm taking the test. I'm like, I never heard of anybody hospitalized off of smoking marijuana. Nah. They always say that nobody's ever died from smoking marijuana. Oh, and the test shit, they saying people don't, they got a percentage of people that don't die from marijuana. 
See, I've always heard the opposite. I'm like, bro, I never ever heard of that shit. They got me reading some shit, some shit talking about the membrane and <laughs> cerebellum and right. I'm like, oh shit. Try to use Google. That shit don't work because I got the answer wrong. <laughs> I had to redo the motherfucker. <laughs> Google gave me the wrong motherfucking answer, man. Holy shit. And niggas told me, boy, go to Google. You can pad that motherfucker with a honey. Right. But it's a dog on lie. I'm really bad at test taste, uh, test taking, too. Like, when I had to get my gun license, mm. I'm, like, overthinking all the questions mm. to the point where, like, I'm like really simple questions are starting to seem really complicated to man, me. I did the same yeah. thing. I'm reading simple shit, like, I got to reread it to see how they describing it. Like, man, this shit seemed difficult. Right. Why they giving me this? Yo, I, I wanted to ask you this. I remember back in the day, there was this uh, video that a lot of people on Twitter reminded me of this like cartoon animation thing. Oh, that man. The short short buzz, buzz Shorty. Man, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> what was going through your head when you first saw this back in the day? Who the fuck made this shit? <laughs> they, they, well, they, they trying to say I'm retarded. <laughs> That's the first thing I said. I asked myself, I said, man, is they, is they acting like I'm slow? Right. She like, no, nah, they p- kind of picking that how you rap. Right. Hannah Montana, and I got stamina. And I uh, like animals, Anna, Anna, Hannah Montana. Anna, Anna, banana. I'm like, oh, okay. So y'all taking some of the shit I was saying and making it, reversing it funny style on me like but it's funny how they were also saying things that you were saying like i'm still whipping babies yeah, and it shows you whipping, whipping a baby, baby. <laughs> they got fucking gucci walking around eating crayons yeah. <laughs> talking about where's my carmax man <laughs> bro i was so fucking disgusted with this shit i'm like who 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 even got the time to sit there and, and do all this yeah. to examine how we rap cuz they they even fuck with flock fuck 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 i was so like oh my god bro they ain't, oh bro y'all did that wrong bro y'all did that wrong bro but i understand it it was funny right but to me who the motherfucker y'all talking about, bitch, it wasn't funny. It kind of helped make you more of a legend, though, right? Because I don't I, know. Probably a lot of people remember that song and don't remember that it was a parody, bro. And they walk up to me thinking <laughs> I actually made this fucking song, bro. I'm like, bro, you know that's a parody, right? Yeah. They're like, no, no, bro. Yes, bro. They were making fun of me, bro. Right. When you heard him say, uh, or you in the song, or the version of you say uh, something about, and I'm still getting blumpkins. I don't, I don't. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I, I was thinking like, there's no way OJ knows what a blumpkin is. I don't. What is that? It's uh, when you get head while you're taking a shit. Man, stop it. <laughs> yeah, well, that is, that is what it is. <laughs> I know. I, for one, I don't even want a girl that close because my shit finna stink. <laughs> yeah. You won't look at me as a nasty ass nigga after you smell this motherfucker. Your life's not gonna be the same. And once you hear it, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, you feel me like you hearing it hit the water. So you ain't gonna wanna suck a dick after that one. Nah. She gotta be a real fucked up yeah, bitch. bitch. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get you tested, guys. <laughs> or get my sausage tested away. Well, you don't fucking gave me something. Yeah. Hey, if you cool with this shit. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. Damn, a blumpkin is a getting fucking head washing. Nah, that's new. Now you know. Damn. Now Blum- you're more connected with the white fan base who Blumpkin. probably knows about that more. Wow. Hey, wow! The world has changed. That's crazy. What What is rocking like? Cut off stockings. Oh, what is rocking like? Cut off. I mean, like we down like four flat tire. We can't go nowhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we we rocking like you my buddy, buddy like shit. And then you call me, right? And I can be down to my last ten thousand, but you need five thousand to help pay your. I'm gonna get to you, right? But you my dog. Right, like, but we rocking like nigga. That's how we rocking. We rocking like that. But what are cut off stockings, and why are they so oh, tightly knit? Like, God. why are they like? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> because um, I want to say like the stockings. You know, they already tight. Right. So that meaning like we tight. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Cut them off, goddamn. Because in the chain game, you know, you wear them high ass socks. So, but you'll cut them down to where now you got the mid low socks. You know mm. what I'm saying? So we'll cut the stockings. You know what I'm saying? Or you might cut the stockings to uh, while you in chain game. You 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 or you purchase the women's stock and you cut and now you got do rag. Right. You know what I'm saying? I like it. And the do rag give you the ways and shit. Yeah, it makes sense. Definitely.
You always just had the gift of gab. I got to give it to you, man. <laughs> I, appreciate it, man. I, I always memorize that, even though I never, you know, you know never I really knew like, what it meant. Tesco shout it, Sam Valley mm. shout it, Bo the Chris shout it, bomb in the bush. And they be like, what the hell you mean, bomb in the bush? Right. Oh, I got it. Mm. Yeah, there's only one thing that can mean. Are Texaco <laughs> still out here like that? Yeah, well, in Atlanta. Okay. Sure. I ain't really seen none out here. Y'all got 76. Yeah. Uh, oh, what's the other big one I seen? It's green. 7 Eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 7 Eleven everywhere. Yeah, y'all got them everywhere. Y'all said, got them without gas. I said Sunoco the other day. Mm. And nobody knew what I was talking about. Yeah, I'm like, nah, oh, I, I guess maybe that is a gas station that I haven't seen in like hella long. Nah, we got them down. Oh, you got them too. Right? That's in Carolina, though. Okay. The sun and I grew up next to a Texaco, so I always liked mm. how you would say that yeah, shit. Yeah, Tesco. Yeah, that's that's right though. Like we walk up to Tesco and get the fucking hug juices and the thirty cent chips and walk back to the bus stop. Right. Definitely. It was funny when they. Uh, right, right, okay. Also, when I was searching your name on World Star, one of the first things that came out though was when you and Soldier Boy went at it over him jacking your ad libs back in the day. That was a classic one because Soldier oh, Boy did that to a lot of people. I'm gonna be oh, real with you. Oh man, here because I hadn't, <laughs> I hadn't really got in where yes. I needed to be yet, and then you trying to take my shit. But then after that, Soldier Boy being end up being a cool ass nigga. Yeah, you guys got along good boy, after that, right? Boy, cool here. We did two records. Uh, the reason why I was on the BET Hip Hop Awards in 2009, maybe 2010, one of them when I had the purple on. At first, I thought I was going on stage. Uh, they told me I was going on stage before. I brought two outfits. I changed after I went on stage. But I ended up wasn't able to go on stage. But I mean a jeweler in the back to get some jewelry. Mm. And at the same time, Soldier Boy gets some jewelry from the same jeweler. And he see me. He like, Jew, come in my trailer. He got a whole fucking trailer back there. Nigga, I pulled up in the car. I ain't got shit. I got to sit in the audience. Mm. He was big as hell at the time. Go back down to the trailer with him. And at the time now, I made the diss on, mad at him about stealing my shit. Boom. He uh, called me back there. Hey, Jew, I'm doing Gucci Band down on stage. Bro, I think it'll be dope if you do the A's. That's how you squashed it. I said, bro. So he didn't even acknowledge the diss song or none? Mm, hell no. Nah. <laughs> hey, wow. Hell no. Nah. That's hell legendary. Nah. I'm, I'm going up here. I'm doing Gucci Man down. I need you to do the A because you the nigga with the A. I'm like, you know what? Bro, these folk told me I was going to perform, and I get up here, they're saying I can't. And now you saying I can with you? Come on. Right. I'm finna tear that ass up. I don't even know Gucci Bandana, but when I hear the A coming up, that's what I'm going to do. Hey, Gucci Bandana. Hey, Gucci Bandana. Hey, hey. Fuck you mean. That's all you want? Come on with it. Right. And then after that, we did songs together. I don't think any rapper ever had a high-pitched ad-lib before that. Mm. You know, like a non-high-pitched voice, mm. but then they have a high-pitched ad-lib. If you think about that in isolation, I think that was why Damn. it was so shocking at the time. Yeah. True. High-pitched. Damn. Yeah. Without a super high pitched voice, yeah, and then but my A's coming up. Hey, okay, damn, legend. Mm. You know what I love too is uh, one time I went to one of your uh, your shows in LA, some some event, some brand book tour or something, and uh, oh what was it? It was it was some beer. It was like oh Coke forty five. Yes, yeah, I did a Coke forty five beer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember that your live show was crazy because you you just have like a track of mm -hmm. all your tracks mm -hmm. so that the DJ doesn't have to spend time mm -hmm. clicking between them or nope. nothing. Mm -hmm. You just come out and just kill plug every single one back yep. to back. That shit was fucking plug, fire. Plug and play. I still run out this same method to the day. When I ain't able to bring the DJ, I'm flash drive. Plug mm -hmm. and play. That motherfucker gonna run all the way through. I got like three different versions. I got a 12 minute version. I got a 15 minute version. I got a 28 minute oh, version. Oh wow, really? Okay. I got a 34 minute version. So the long, the the short ones, just all the the most popular songs packed together. Yeah, v compared to what kind of event I got to do, like they ain't giving you that many songs, they give you three songs, bro. So, right. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. All right, this is my last question: Is what like obviously you're somebody who has such love for the streets and for your old neighborhood and everything like that? How do you like? What's your current relationship with that environment? How do you keep tabs on it? And and what is your overall thought on what's going on in the environment that you come from at this point in your life? Mm, I keep tabs on it. Uh, I pull up time to time. I pull up time to time. I try to not hang out like super like that right. because I don't been in a situation where. 
I'm OJ the Juice Man, but I'm still thinking street mentality. So I'm standing at the Tesco and some robbers peep me from the light. Okay, boom. I don't see what they on. Mm. Boom. I'm chilling, chilling. Boom. I go on the stove. And you looking like you look right now? No jewelry, but oh, okay. dress good. Car. And they see my face. That, okay. Well, that ear, he on that ear, that nigga. So, boom, I go on the stove, get some chips, juice. Not knowing a nigga behind me following my every move. Like, if I go to this juice, he go kind of right here. When I go to the bag of chips... He go right here with the juice at. When I go to the candy, he go right here. So, boom, I ain't peep this at all. Now I put my shit on the counter, pay for it. He behind me. I ain't peeping it still. Pay for it, boom, come out the store, go to my car, my car park right in front of the store. Boom, what he do is he fake put his shit on the counter, but then come out the store behind me. Don't get none of the shit. So now I put my shit on the car, but my gun in the car. So I put my shit on top of my car, give him a car key, talking to my buddy and them who out there standing. And next thing you know, a nigga come out around the corner with the gun up. And he say, a nigga run, nigga gonna die. So I look, I look, I look, pew. Because if I ever try to go to my gun, I'm a, he gonna shoot me the fuck up. Right. I pew, nigga busting at me. Pow, 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 pow. While I'm random, I'm zigzag, I'm doing all kind of shit. But in my head, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I'm running slow ahead. I know I run faster than this. I look back. It's a nigga got me like this. Somebody's holding you? Somebody fucking holding me Ooh. while I'm running. I look back. It's uh, I don't even know this nigga face. He, he, I look back on his shirt. He bloody down. His buddy shooting at me hit him. He looked back, holding me, hopping on one leg. Stop, stop, bro. Stop shooting, bro. Stop shooting, bro. I got him. I got him, bro. Stop shooting. How long ago was this? Uh, it's 2022 now. This had to be um, 17, okay. maybe 18. But this never got reported on or nothing? Nah. How, so what happens then? Um, Once I look back to see that the nigga holding on to me, I look up, I, I go from shirt to face. I'm like, bro, I don't know this nigga. I'm knocking his hand out. Like, bro, get your hand out. Bro. I'm like, bro, get your hand out. Nigga, these niggas shoot. Not knowing he with them. But I see he hit, but I'm thinking he hit running behind me. Right. But in actuality, while that's going on, he's still jumping, talking about that. He won't let me go. So I come out my pants because I see this is what you want. I, I come out my pants so goddamn, I mean, some... I'm in some true religion shorts. That's why I ain't have my gun on me. The pocket on the true religion shorts had like a slant in it. Mm. And at my Tesco where I'm from, the Cab County police and Atlanta police can pull in on you. And the way the shorts made, I don't got so many gun convictions, I'm like, I can't stand another one right now. Boom, let me leave the gun in the car, run in the store, get the shit, come back out. Boom. And then this shit happened. So boom, I take out running. I see did what the nigga want. He either wants some money or he want my pan with the wallet type shit. I don't know. Because, you know, my ID got my address on it. You feel it? Right. Boom. Come out the pan ASAP. Well, they some shorts. They true religion shorts. Let him get the short. I'm running across the street in my draw now. Just trying to get away from the nigga who shoot. Right. You feel me? Because he aiming directly at me. That's how he hit buddy. So from that, once he got my shorts, he turned around. He wrapped my shorts around his arm. And hop back towards the way his buddy ran after shooting at me. And so I waited. I ran across the street. I'm like behind the bus stop slit, looking to see if I see niggas moving funny. If that's them, all right, the store kind of clear now. I go back through the store parking lot. Bro, my car key fall out my short as he wrapping my shorts around his arm. My wallet stayed, my money stayed, but my car key fall out. Boom, I get in the car, first thing I do, grab my scrap. I'm mad at hell now, but them niggas gone. So, boom, I'm riding around looking for anybody looking like they shot or moving funny when shit like that. So, it, it, it was a lot, but that just come to show. And the cops didn't show up? I got away before because I'm a convicted uh -huh. felon. I got gunpowder on my hand. Oh, no, I ain't got no gunpowder because I can't get to my gun. Right. But I got my gun in the car. 
You know what, what I'm the saying? Fuck. So basic lesson right there is it can still go down no matter how much you think you're not a target. Yeah, yeah. yeah much I think I'm back in my neighborhood. I'm cool, niggas. Oh, but that's just Jew. Oh, he broke. He back at the store. He got to sell dope again. When you trying to be on some cool shit, go and tap in with everybody, yeah, just, right? You know, kick, kick it, chill, and just pull up. Like, oh, I ain't on no rapper shit. Like, I ain't, I'm still the same OJ that you knew. You know what I'm right. saying? And Damn. then another situation, I do the same shit. Go back up there. We in the huddle, talking, and we had the Tesco motherfucker, a PT Cruiser pull in. And the nigga got a green mask down, face down this way with a hood on. So at the gate, I'm clutching. I'm ready to shoot this motherfucker out the gate. Cause ain't no way you pulling up at Nutesco 10 o'clock at night. Green mask down. They way before young boy. Mm. This had to be been like 2018, 20, nah, even when he 19. So oh, it was it before COVID. Yeah. Because the mask is less scary now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it used to be real yeah. scary. This nigga pull up. Uh, so I'm telling my buddy, like, boy, y'all seen how the nigga just pulling him? Boy, I'm finna shoot home. Nah, you, you tripping, you tripping. Don't do it, bro. Hell nah, bro. That's a Muslim. I'm like, bro, that ain't no goddamn. Boy, yes, it is a Muslim. She come up here every night and buy shit. I'm like, bro, I ain't no Muslim coming up here in no hoodie and no face mask. Down. I mean, uh, a bandana, a uh, nose down with a hoodie on. So we arguing back and forth. Now the PT cruising on pulled in and bagged up towards the, the the Tesco to where he just facing he can just shoot straight out and be back on the street boat crit. So, but we in the huddle. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. And we in the huddle. Got down the PT cruising. You could tear from his head motion. He like this the whole time. I'm like, bro, let me shoot him. But I'm still arguing with my buddy about Muslim shit. Right. Boom. The PT Cruiser see how the circle is to get me. You finna have to kill a few more people. Right. To get to me. Just to get to me, you gonna have to kill about two more niggas. So how it is, like the gas pump, gas pump, you can pull through, pull through, you pull through, you pull in, pull in, or you can bag up straight to the store door. Boom. He pull up, we in the middle. I'm moving with his car now. I'm on, I'm on whatever he on. As his car pulling up, I'm walking around so I can get an aim at him just as he trying to maybe get an aim at me. Right. Boom. He pulled through the gas pump. I'm moving around. Boom. He going down the hill. And then I'm walking kind of behind the car, but I don't want to be like seen like I'm just aggressive. I'm the aggressor. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm walking in just to see where the car went. I hear a car door shut. Boom. So now I whip my fire because it, it got to be him. Right. Boy, I whip my fire. He come off around the PT Cruise on the main street. He like, oh, y'all fuck nigga got y'all fire. He raised his fire. Boom. I raised mine up. My shit say, click. I know my fire bus. I just busted a few days ago. But I know my fire bus. Then they got hit fire. I pulled my fire. That bitch say click. So my buddy grabbed my arm, pulled me off from around the corner. Like, boy, hell nah, come in. Come in the store. Come in the store. Your scrap ain't even working. So I'm walking in the store, checking my scrap. Now, I forget I'm a convicted felon. Because I'm worried about why my scrap ain't working. Right. I'm on camera now, walking in the store, <laughs> checking my fire. Damn. So boom. I'm in that motherfucker, waiting, checking my fire. But then a bud I know come in. Boom. See him. Normally, he keep his gun. Hey, boy, you got your fire on you? And you know it. All right, cool. I'm going to walk out the store with you. I start implicating what happened or why I'm asking you, do you got your fire? Boom. We get out the store. PT Cruz is coming back up the street now. This nigga done turned around. Roll the window now. So, boom, I duck. That's the first thing I do, duck. Everybody duck. So, he's not even trying to rob you at this point. He's nah, just... he just shoot. Right. Do you think this is a robbery to start, or do you think this is a person who had a problem with you? Well, I can't say. Damn. I, I don't know, and I'm not no sh I'm not no nigga that's going to start the shit. See, that's why I'm wondering, like, do, yeah. you, do you have issues? Like, no, would, hell no. You'd be surprised by that, nah, right? Yeah, okay, hell yeah. no. I ain't, I ain't that kind of nigga. Right. If anything, I'm just not even going to come around. You know what I'm saying? So, in the midst of him, shoot. I got my fight, but my fight just went bust, so I ain't thinking about my fight no more. I, my buddy who came in the store, boy, give me your fight since you ain't busting back. Let me bust, because this nigga ain't stopping. I ain't got it. Bro, you just lied to me in the store. You said you got your fire. Now you saying you don't got the fire. Man, this nigga finna come on here and kill her, bro. So some told me, Juice, retry your fire. 
Now my five busts. Nigga pull off. But other than that, he was just gonna still keep sitting there shooting at me. You're making Atlanta sound like a very scary place where this shit could just happen. It's like I not mean, that crazy. It can, but I mean, that, I'm just giving a perspective of me thinking I ain't OJ the juice man. Right, yeah. So so do you feel like you've kind of had to learn this lesson over and over of like Bro, you, some spot you just can't hang, bro. You can't yeah. do the old shit you was doing before you was OJ the juice man. Mm. You can't do the OJ shit. Right. You were on the double XL cover with Nipsey. Damn. If you got killed in one of those situations, we'd be talking about you the same way we talk about him, you know? Damn. Like if you got killed at that gas station, especially, that and would that's be like, what I would think. I'm like, I rap about the gas station. Yeah. And I get man, let me stop coming, bro. Mm. Let me just let me wise up, bro. Cause it can fucking happen. No matter if I do got my gun. I can't believe that you would attract that kind of attention from people who, especially if you're wearing all your ju- all your jewelry and shit, it, it's like more understandable. Yeah, but, but I know not to go outside like that because I don't want them to yeah. draw that kind of. You know what I'm saying? I already got to deal with. Hey, bro, let me get a picture. Now I need to know what do you want a real picture right. or on you some f- or, or on you or are you on some fuck shit? Yeah. I got to decipher that like within seconds. Like, do you really want this shit or you want to move? Right. All right. So last question, because they're trying to get you out of here. But so what's what's the good life to you at this point? Like mm-hmm. what what really matters? What are the things that, that you need to make OJ the Juice Man a happy person? Mm, I wanna I wanna try to be back that top tier artist I was. I hate I'm proud of and I don't say I don't feel like I really waited so long. It just the marketing and promotion ain't there for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but I want to be that 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 caliber artist to where people, you know what I'm saying, have fun with it, with my music. You know what I'm saying? It's like they didn't forget about me. I still got my hardcore people, but without that right marketing and promotion, it's it's too many other rappers to be focused on old uh, OJ the Juice Man when it's a new one. You know what I'm saying? Don't mean? don't sell yourself short though, man. You're a yeah, real sure. legend. Like there's absolutely nobody. Who fucks with like street music that I could have a conversation with besides maybe the real young kids who weren't but I'm saying like everybody knows. OJ, I mean, you've had an incredible career and a huge impact on motherfuckers. So mm. I, I I hate to hear you kind of selling yourself short like Damn, that. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I a lot of people tell me that. I just I don't know, man. I that's what I feel like. That will make me you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like right now I gotta work down there three times harder mm. just to keep everything level headed, you know what I'm saying? And at the same time, still make my payroll to people I put in position because I don't want, I never was that kind of person. Well, if it go bad tomorrow, man, I don't did all this shit for that nigga, man. He wouldn't even pay me, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I don't want that on my name. So I, I pay for everything I do and I, I move out how I can move based off what I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Other than that, I I try, and I, and, I, and some people are like, damn, bro, what happened to you? You quit? Nah, I was still putting music out. It just maybe your your enthusiasm of OJ the Juice Man wasn't there because it wasn't in your face. Mm. So when I drop some, yeah, I might just throw it out without a whole bunch of video. So yeah, yeah, you might not know because on top of that, the newer artists that you liking when they dropping their shit, they got the content to come with it. Mm. So now you seeing and hearing. But with Juice Man, you you hear him, but I like him, but he ain't giving me enough. Mm. He taking too long to drop. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So I feel like I need to try harder or work better at putting the content more. Getting Like, yeah, the music is great, but I need the visual content. I need to stay more active in their face because that's what they care more about. Like, once you kind of fade out of their eye, I want to see OJ the Juice Man on TikTok every day. Mm. But uh, do on, on TikTok, do I got to dance all the time? No. Okay, okay. You can't smoke weed. Oh, you can't? They'll get your ass for that. Mm. <laughs> it's a little different than Instagram. Oh, damn. Yeah, okay. but I don't know. Either way, man, it's, it's been a real honor getting man, to sit you. down with you, have nah, a conversation, man. You, you've been a huge, massive influence on a gigantic percentage of the artists I interviewed on here mm. over the years. So uh, definitely just know that your effect has been felt on me and many other people man, in this world, you, man. Adam, man. I did no jump. I put out the song called Jump. They like, bro, you need to do it. No Adam. I'm like, nigga, you know how long I've tried to do it. No jump. I <laughs> I've been trying to do it forever. Adam, man, that nigga Adam hard, bro. Ah.
Nah, I appreciate it. I'm that. talking about, man, I, I've told a lot of my buddy them that, like, man, the nigga Adam Hard, bro. That nigga podcast, the no jumper motherfucker, man, that motherfucker the one, man. Hey, I appreciate that, man. For real, bro. Let's do some more shit in the future for Let's sure. I seen it. you doing the, the pop up with my boy Desto Dub. Oh, yeah, Desto, big shout out to Desto Dub. Awful That's lot of Jew, man. Yeah, ooh. Ooh, that was a hard ass collab. That bro. was fire, yeah. That I seen you hard. rapping in the store. I'm oh, like, man, yep. that's amazing. I should have yep. gone out for that shit. Yeah, I'm sure did. I rapped in the store. I did a lot mm. of songs too. Fire. All right. OJ Juice, man. Appreciate you, man. Hey, let's get it. Make sure y'all follow me, man. Big shout out to No Jumper. Thank you, Adam22 and the whole staff, man. We rocking like cut. I was talking down like four flat tire. We can't go nowhere, cool. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no Jumper, coolest podcast Jeez. in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, et cetera. Like, comment, and subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Go turn my man OJ up on all streaming platforms, YouTube, et cetera. Let's go. Appreciate you, man. Hey, yes, sir. Adam, nice thank you, man. That was dope, bro. Okay.